Again, long been an enormous fan of Samata's work. Thank you. And Samata, I mean, you've really spent uh, your career working at this cult this nexus of kind of culture and yes. sustainability and fashion. Mm. And so we've 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 touched on the panel across a range of issues from circular to just transition. Yeah building the female economy, um, decarbonisation. Okay. But I wondered Sounds if you good. could... Yeah. <laughs> thorough. <laughs> thorough, exactly. <laughs> um, I've heard you talk um, in the past about how fashion really connects us. And I've seen you do yeah. your, hey, everyone, put your hand up if you're wearing clothes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Which I almost borrowed My this morning. <laughs> but I thought, I can't if you're not here. That, 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 that would be cheeky. You see people second guessing, like... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I wondered if you could tell us, you know, a little bit about where, you know, and at Futura we think this approach on working on culture to drive sustainability yeah. is a total game changer. Mm -hmm. It's been recognised now from IPCC and at Report 6 at last, so a little bit more kind of recognition from the sustainability community, but I wondered if you could give us a little bit of your perspective on where you see the, you know, how it can help and, and what mm, we can do. Absolutely. Um, so for me, I'm really, really passionate about the intersection of culture and sustainability because I think unless we can apply a lens of culture to conversations about sustainability, we will continue to exclude masses of people, but not only exclude masses of people, but just keep kind of coming up short when it comes to solutions. So when I talk about culture, I, I don't mean this kind of single monolithic definition of it. I look at culture as this thing that's intellectual, spiritual, academic, socio socio-economical. I look at it through lenses such as values, belief systems. I look at it through things like geographics, age, race, gender, um, educational levels of attainment. There are all of these different levels of things that we can apply to this word called culture. And that doesn't even layer in music, art, food, the things that we identify as part of our cultural identity, like how we did things growing up, our ways of being, our traditions and our beliefs. And the reason that I think this really complex, multifaceted lens is important is because suddenly the conversations you start having about sustainability get a lot richer, they get more authentic, they get deeper, and you start to understand why we aren't getting where we need to get to, for example, there are certain lenses of culture that I feel are well examined, like geography. We, we know fairly well that if you're looking at something like climate change, based on where you are geographically, your experience of climate change is going to be quite disparate. Like I have family in Ghana, how they're experiencing floods and things like that is different to me being a Cambridge-born person, going to Cambridge and being like, oh, it's really hot in here. <laughs> you know, it's just a different you know, experience. And we also know that they aren't really responsible for kind of generating this. And I think another lens that's been really well examined is age. We know that if you're looking at like a youth co um, population, there is this huge mobilization around climate. And we know that we're really relying on these young voices to really push us and steer the dialogue. But I feel like some lenses, oh my gosh. I staggered her. <laughs> I had no idea. She's our office dog. <laughs> um, but there are certain lenses of culture that haven't been examined thoroughly enough, like disability. Yeah. When you start putting that lens and suddenly you see, especially with fashion, there are still masses of people who can't even get into the clothes mm -hmm. that we're trying to make sustainably, let alone feel like they can participate. If you look at things like values and spirituality, again, there are conversations we need to be having with like faith-based groups about how they're interpreting sustainability through their dialogue of faith. So, you know, and there's all of these pockets of really cool conversations we could be having and should be having if we were just a bit more thorough with this cultural lens. So I, I just, I'm really enthusiastic about it because I just feel that we're missing, on, missing out on so many fantastic solutions because we're not kind of being rich enough in how we're probing things. Um, I didn't prepare this question, but I wondered, um, <laughs> It, when we started out, we were talking about how fashion is this you know, great way into climate because yeah. it connects to everything, to ag, to everything, yeah. ag agriculture. Do you think there's something that fashion has particularly in that kind of culture? It, 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 in that kind of cultural enabler to talk about sustainability? Definitely. I mean, we know as we travel the world and as we experience these different cultures I'm talking about. So, for example, where I'm from in Ghana, we have these um, symbols called the Adinkra symbols, and they're cultural symbols. There's about 50 of them. And they're in our clothing. They're stamped in. They're dyed in with natural bark. They're on our bags, our hats, and so on. But they are literally sustainable messages. There's one called Unsa, which means that you have to value the earth. If you go to Japan, they have um, this philosophy called in praise of shadows this idea that because we're pushing for this perfect in um, industry and we're pushing for every single item of clothing to look the same so we went from natural dyes to synthetic dyes and all of the challenges associated with that we've stopped appreciating the nuance and difference so we don't look for things that are one-off anymore which is a huge 
solution to sustainability. Instead, we're looking at everything to be perfect, everything to be well illuminated. So even as you look at how people express their identity through clothing, um, there's this amazing stitching form called um, Sashiko, I think it is, and it's basically tiny, tiny stabs of embroidery over holes and mends, but the philosophy is about frugality. It's about extending the life, extending how long you're interacting with something through like mending those things and still seeing the beauty in it. So even as you look at how we present ourselves, there's all of this opportunity to still have dialogue about sustainability, um, but not limit people from feeling like they can't still express who they are. Glorious. Um, almost as if we planned it, that leads quite well to 